Well, it's been ages since I did a carving video, so I chose a, one of these carving patterns from this set of drawings, this decorated S-scroll, we call it, and uh, carved that here at the end of the day, where I was going to run out of light, so it had to go fast, and uh, so it won't take all that long, but I'll show you how I drew and carved that pattern in this piece of oak. It's um, the layout is just, whoops, stand up there. The layout is just a pair of rectangles with a horizontal center line. And then most everything else is freehand around that. But you watch the video, you'll see it, and uh, it won't take you all day. All right, it's late afternoon here in the fall. So let's see if I can carve this before the light is gone. Um, I'll just do one of them for right now and see where we get. So taking that curved gouge, this is the, um, what is it, 7 eighths and 11 sixteenths. So a circle that's 7 eighths of an inch and it's just under three quarters, uh, just under three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm striking three circles with it. One right at the middle. So um, here is my rectangle. It's eight inches long, three inches wide. And then one near each end. like that. And that one's a little high. Uh, and I'll draw what I'm going to do so you can see it. The next step is to round off the corners. So from this horizontal center line that I've struck, I come up to that top margin and down to the bottom margin like that. You could get really obsessive and lay that out with a compass, but there's no point. And it's a V-tool cut. as is almost the rest of the whole design. So now, this is like the S-scrolls in the previous uh, set of drawings I did, if you've ever seen those or seen me carve them. So now I'm going to take a line from just about the continuation of that one, and it's going to bend here and curve so it just hits that circle and then it comes sort of narrow right here off of this circle and then a bulbous shape like that. It's very freehand. There's a lot of room for variety there. So those are what I'll carve next. I might have included two steps in one here. So that's a long run with the V-tool. You can break it up. You can start here right where it hits that circle and curve up like that. And then reset your body around that way, like that. And then this one, comes like that. Now, the 
the bits that make it related to the other F scrolls are a, a round leaf right here that goes like that and like that. I'll cut that one. So it comes out of that V2 line and then just sort of fades out or it comes in. I can start here. That, but I forgot this one. You were probably yelling at the video saying, you forgot, you forgot. I do that all the time. Um, so now a pointed leaf that comes from here just about to there, like that. stop that cut I just lower the handle of the tool like that. This one will blend right into that V2 line. Like that. And then just a line that curves back so it comes from the margin here, comes out of that V2 line and just rounds into this V2 line. Almost nothing to it. So at this point, I'll take that very shallow tool to take the background out, which is, what do we call it now? I've lost it. <laughs> I lost the demarcation for this tool ever since we've changed the names of them. But it's um, very, very shallow. It's about half an inch wide. And I use it to just take out the background. And for this I'm using the mallet and just coming right to either that incised bit or the V2 lines like that. This circle comes out Then I switch to hand pressure to finish those off. And try to sneak in there. These backgrounds, you've heard me before, perhaps say. They don't need to be dead flat. They can have facets to them. And I, but I want to get rid of the traces of the V2 line. So I cut down to that where I can. Sometimes those stubborn ones, you can stand the tool up and cut those fibers like that. Now there's an outline in this balloon shape here. The single line that splits to echo that shape. Right like that. Uh, 
and that's more V-tool work. that and then I carry those all the way around here just that single line and connect it like that Then a sort of reverse curve right here. This line bends up like that and curves down to the tip of that leaf. Then a little curve from the margin, sort of coming right back to the margin, like that. And in these. I'll take a very, uh, well, a narrow tool and make a shape that's sort of a, a round head almost. I don't quite connect them and then come back into the other part of the V-tool like that. And I'll go in with that background tool and just take out that resulting little triangle chip there. The tiny little thing. Like that. Now <laughs> Here's the hardest part. It's cutting out in here. I'll make a, uh, well, I had made in the drawing, I made a diamond, which is pretty hard uh, because it, it's so small, you can split it off. That's what can happen. And I'm not finding a tool that's the right size for this particular one. So I'll do something a little different. I'll do a pinwheel. Oh, lost that. That one broke off. So I'll try carefully. Yeah, that's loose. Well, that happens, especially when you're hurrying. Well, we'll leave it right at that. So I'll move over, carve it again, get you a different angle on it, and you can see what's happening.
That's why this oak board was round, it's rotten. So now this one will bend up from here. And down from here. Now these leaves I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera this isn't easy. And this one, bigger this time, I guess. Generally similar. connect the dots there. And then I'll do all these lines at once. Like that. I don't usually draw them in. More inclined to draw on it when it's a design I'm new at and don't know very well.
that's the soft part of that. And there. Now, get rid of the background. What little there is. Well, that's a little slapdash, but that's the gist of it. We'll get closer and look at those pieces there. So you see how they don't quite meet, and then this goes that way to connect it back to that V2 line. Like that. And then when you just take the corner of that tool and really just pop that piece out. And you can hit that with a punch and then Ooh, this is tiny. Like that. Take a little chip behind that. Like that. That's one way I treat those things. Uh, often they're larger and you can get more of these veins in here. Now the pinwheel. Let's see if I have better luck this time. So what I'm doing is just essentially that sort of thing in a, in a circle. But I'm not hitting this as hard as I ordinarily might. I'm tapping it like that and even tilting it over and I just want four uh, cuts in it. Then you carefully come behind that and take that chip out. And this is the hard one. Uh, because now I'm cutting towards something that's already relieved here, so not as strong. But got it that time. So, 
and it's not quite dark. So that's one way to carve that sort of pattern.